Hey everybody, it's Bruce. Well, I think it's been a little while since we've done a shop update, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that now. Um, well, today's been kind of a strange day, actually. Well, it's, it's a beautiful day. It's uh, hot. I mean, it's probably over 20 degrees right now, and inside the sh in my shop, in my office, whatever you call it, it's really warm because the sun's coming in and uh, the windows were closed. So um, it's really hot right now, but uh, beautiful day. And I was riding my mountain bike just for fitness. And uh, actually, I have a race coming up I'm in about uh, six weeks. So I'm just starting to train for that mountain bike race. Anyway, I was riding the bike, and about 10 kilometers in, I accidentally ran over some glass and uh, put a hole in the tire. So um, I ended up having to get my wife to take me back home because I didn't bring any kind of thing to fix my tire. So, so uh, it's kind of rushing around a little bit these last couple hours. Anyway, so um, let's see. I think I made a little list. <laughs> um, first piece of news is I bought some digital calipers. These are, uh, it says carbon fiber composite. I would have just said they're plastic, but uh, um, I'm not even sure what brand they are. I bought these at the uh, Cope Bow and Hobby. They were about uh, 31 Swiss francs. One thing I'm a little bit disappointed in about these though, and it's not the fault of the calipers, it's my fault, I didn't check, but the resolution is only 0.1 millimeters, not 0.01 or 0 0.05 but 0 0.1 so that's not a super high resolution as you can see so that's that that'll help me in making the um, the wood hardness uh, gauge so uh, now that I have these I should be able to complete that what else is new I have a new table saw blade it's actually made for a, um, a hand saw, you know, um, skill saw, whatever. And uh, so it's smaller. My other one was 250 millimeters, and this one's only 190. So it's smaller in diameter, and it's thinner. The other one I had was 3.2 millimeters, and this one's 2.4 millimeters wide. That I like because it'll create less dust, and it'll be easier to cut, I believe. Um, what I don't like is a smaller diameter because I lose a little bit of height. And, uh, but otherwise, it's really nice. My other blade, I think it was wobbly and it was causing the whole table to um, vibrate. Now that I have this one in, the vibration is much, much reduced and it cuts much easier. Like uh, the other blade must have been dull also because this one just cuts super easy. So overall, I'm happy with the blade. It wasn't an expensive blade because I didn't really know if that was the problem or not. So I didn't want to invest very much into a blade so I think that one was about 25 bucks so what else new table saw blade with that I'm finding that I'm cutting a lot more uh, using the table saw a lot more now that I have the blade that I'm not you know terrified of <laughs> um, the bike stand project you might have seen I went ahead and painted the uh, the whole stand to just make it look a little bit better here's a picture of that Okay, so that's some of the stuff I did this past week. Here's some of the things I want to do coming up soon. Number one, like I was saying about the saw blade, uh, now that I have a good saw blade on it, I'm using the table saw more, and I'm creating a ton of dust. And right now, I don't have anything going on with the dust uh, control, for example. It, it's just, dust is just blowing out the back out of the port, so it makes a huge mess, and it's really dusty. So, I don't know. I don't really want to buy a lot of stuff. I was thinking about just making a box in the back and just having the dust just blow into the box rather than all over the place. So I'm still thinking about that. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, I blew up my uh, bike tire today. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and fix that. I'm going to do that right now after this video. Uh, maybe I'll record it. I don't know. Uh, there's a ton of videos I'm sure on YouTube about how to fix a bike tire and actually I probably will just replace the inner tube because uh, I don't know if I have any tire patch kit in this room. The next thing I want to do is make a crosscut sled. I see them on a lot of the videos on YouTube and it looks super useful 
it looks a little bit more safe probably. You can do more uh, accurate cuts. So um, I really want to make a cross cut sled. Probably not today, but well, maybe I can get started on it today at least. And uh, yeah, the final thing was just the wood hardness tester. Um, I should probably do that today because I don't think it'll take as long, at least to shape that square. Uh, for the inner tubes, I have three choices. I happen to have three inner tubes. I have no idea why I have that number of inner tubes. And they're all different. <laughs> so the first one, I think, is a Michelin, and it has the Prescott, Prescott type valve. And probably I'll go with this one because the uh, front tire on the bike also has that same valve type. So, And also, I think this one's lighter, so probably makes sense to go with this one. But I'm going to check all the weights and see which one is actually the lightest, and maybe I'll go with the lightest one even. All right, so looks like... 172 grams about. This next one I think is a B-Twin. This is a, probably I bought this at the Decathlon in France. It's a sporting goods store. So this was probably a real, real cheapy. But it's the same specifications, 26, 1.75 to 2.125. Okay, let's see how much it weighs. And it has a, I don't know what it's called, the standard valve. I'm betting it might weigh a little bit more because it's probably a cheaper tire or a cheaper inner tube. Not much, a little bit more. 187, that's really not much. It's only 14 grams different, that's really nothing. All right, finally the third one is a CST brand and it seems to be exactly the same size, designed for the same size tire, 26 by 1.75 to 2.125. CST is, uh, I've seen these for sale in Switzerland, so I probably bought this at a sporting goods store here in Switzerland. Interesting thing about it is it seems to have, well, for one thing, it has a standard valve, but it seems to be quite long. And I feel like this one is even heavier than the other two. So let's see. I'm going to put this rubber band around it. I'm sure that weighs absolutely nothing. It doesn't even register. Okay, that'll help keep it together. There we go. Yep. Sure enough, 310 grams. Wow, that's hugely different. Okay, just to recap, the Michelin was the lightest at 173 grams, the B-Twin was second at just a little, little bit more of 187, and the third was this uh, C CTS at a huge 310. So this one's really heavy. I'll definitely probably just want to use this for some kind of cruiser or um, I don't know, something else. But the B-Twin is good. I mean, that's basically the same weight. But today I think I'll put on the Michelin just because it has the same valve type as the other tire on that bike. Ah, here it is. Yeah, that's a pretty big hole. Get close up here. Okay, so let's see how much this weighs. 192. So that's a little bit heavier than the first two, but it's still in the same range. I mean, that's not that much different. One thing I really need to do, I've made this mistake before, is go in and check inside the tire to make sure the glass isn't still there. Because one time I had a piece of glass I ran over, it got embedded into the tire, I put another inner tube in, or no, actually I patched it, but it was at you know, maybe a slightly different spot, or whatever and uh, I got a hole again so right now I'm gonna check the inside of the tire to make sure there's no embedded glass okay according to the scale this tire is 565 grams Okay, so the goal here will be to make a 3.2 by 3.2 square on this punch.
Okay, after a few minutes of digging around with the uh, stuff I have, I came up with a couple possible solutions. The first thing I thought is I found these washers and, well, maybe not this one. That might not work. But some of them are almost the same size and I can probably just press fit them on. But now that I see the big ones don't fit, I maybe I have to find some more. But anyway, I believe I could pretty easily press fit some washers on. These here added up come up to 29 grams, so that's almost right. That's one option. This tube, which was part of a seat tube of a bike that I wanted to lighten up a little bit, happens to weigh 34, so obviously I could bring it down a bit. This might be easy just to put it over it and then crush this sleeve, hammer it onto this. That probably would work and it would probably be pretty easy. The other thing I thought about is using this wire and just wrapping it on. That would be pretty easy too probably because I can just wrap it until until it weighs the right amount. I'm thinking I might try that because it's at least permanent. You know, if I clamp this on, it might be a pain to get off. If I put a bunch of these washers, it could be a pain to get off. But if I just wrap this wire on and I don't like it or something, I can pretty easily just take it back off. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm not worried if it doesn't look great or it's not super tight. It's not a... Uh, not a tool that needs to be looked at so much. It's not a piece of art. I don't know if I should keep going with this. Okay, I'm out of the washers that fit very well, so this is as heavy as I can get it for now. I could go to the store and get another one of these and make it exact, but this is pretty close. This gives us, I think it was 90 grams. Okay, 89. No, 90 grams. So we're only 3 grams off. That's almost nothing. So I'll try to go to the store and get another one of these small washers, add it on later, and then we'll probably be right on. But for now, I'm going to test it and see how it works. Okay, I'm going to test this uh, bike stand I made last week. It's pretty heavy, so I don't think I have to clamp it down. That's the reason I'm using that. And I just need to quickly measure 1.5 meters and drop it a couple times. That was a good one. And I saw that Matthias did his in standard, not metric, so I will do the same just to have the same relatable values. I just realized these calipers don't have a depth gauge. No. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, it was a rather short day in the shop because of my bike tire thing, but I did fix the tire. It looks good. And I did complete my uh, drop gauge. I am very disappointed that now, now I've learned the calipers don't have a shut off, automatic shut off. They only go to point 0.1 resolution and there's no drop depth gauge on it. I do also have a dial indicator. I just need to get uh, the right point for it, the right tip, and then I can probably pretty accurately measure these holes also. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.